Welcome back. In the previous uh, part of this lecture series, we see we saw that uh, simply connecting a connector to a source of charge is not a good way of storing charge, and that we should think of something else. So let us develop uh, from scratch the concept of what we call as paddle-plate capacitor. So what is a paddle-plate capacitor? Take a plate. This is a connecting plate like this and give it whatever charge you can we know not too much charge can be given to it but let's say whatever charge could be given to it let's say the source which was providing charge to it is at 3 volts this is just for the sake of an example now what will happen this uh, when the charge will flow from the source to this plate as long as the potential of the plate also doesn't become equal to 3 volt so when the charge stops flowing, we are sure that the potential of this plate is also 3 volts. Now, in the second step, what I do, I bring another parallel, very similar plate close to it. Now there are two parallel plates facing each other. Now what will happen, this is a metallic plate, metallic or connecting plate, what will happen, due to induction, this side of the plate will acquire negative charge while the other side will require the positive charge. They will be equal and opposite. And negative will try to reduce the potential of this positive plate and positive is trying to increase the potential of this plate. However, this positive is not uh, playing too much of its role simply because it is obstructed by a metallic sheet. And you can consider, you can consider the caution surface, I don't want to go into detail of that. Uh, proving that, but similar way of thinking of it is that let's say I grounded the second plate. Now there is induced charge over there. The positive, this face, this side of it, this is uh, the, a magnified view, view of this plate. What, what was there? This side acquired negative charge, this side acquired positive charge. As I grounded, this whole positive charge flows to the ground. Whereas this negative charge stays intact. Now, this negative will try to reduce the potential of this plate. Let's say its potential fall by from 3 volt to let's say 2 volts. Now what will happen? As its potential fall, the charge from that reservoir, from where the charge was coming, the charge from that reservoir will further flow to this plate and it will try to increase its potential further till it again becomes equal to 3 volt. So more charge will flow and its capacity would get enhanced. That means that uh, you may say that uh, if I've got a conductor, if I've got a plate, its capacity increases, its capacity to hold charge increases when it brought closer to it an uncharged, this was an uncharged plate. This negative charge was the induced charge. When I bring an uncharged grounded plate close to it. If, uh, I repeat, the capacity of a connecting plate increases significantly if another uncharged grounded plate is brought near to it and what I said is what we call as the principle of parallel plate capacitor. You may ask me, well, that didn't seem to have increased the capacity too much. That it, it, it's a natural notion that uh, okay, some charge, some induced charges might have effect and it might have increased its capacitance a little, but not too much. Oh my god, what we can do? We can bring in another plate on the other side. What you can think of this now, this plate will also increase the capacity of this plate. Rather, actually, parallel plate capacitors are never used, almost always, they are in the form of cylinders, concentric cylinders. So we have got an inner cylinder and uh, let's generalize it. When we bring in plate on one side, its capacity increased. I brought in plate from the other side, its capacity increased. Why not to make this inner plate in the form of a cylinder and keep another metallic plate around it? Now, from every side, the induced charge will try to reduce its potential, so basically its capacity will increase. So this is what we call as 
uh, cylindrical capacitor, the exact formula for its expression for its capacitance, I will write that later uh, in next lecture. But for the time being, the conceptually, we are we, we are sure that capacity of a conductor can be enhanced significantly if you bring in another connector close to it. And what about if you put something inside this gap? Inside this gap, if you put in something over there, I'll show you that capacity can be enhanced really magnitude by introducing uh, certain periods. Let's start with this. Now I will do three articles. One, I will find out the expression for capacity of a parallel plate capacitor which is empty from within, that means vacuum within. And then I will deal with the case when the two plates have got some conducting material between them. And then we will discuss a third case when some dielectric or insulating material is between the plates. Let's find out the expression for capacitance of a parallel capacitor in these three cases. The first case is when uh, we, we, we haven't put anything between the plates. Now these are the plates. I'm assuming the area of cross section to be A and distance between plates to be B. This is the positive plate and this has got some induced magnetic charges and this is grounded. Now we know that electric field between two parallel plates, we, which we have done as an application uh, of Gaussian. What is the expression for electric field within this plate? Let's say I call that uh, E naught. We know that that is equal to sigma by epsilon naught. And if I've got uh, charge Q induced on this, uh, that means charge Q is stored over there, you can simply say it is Q by A epsilon naught. So electric field within this hollow or empty space between the plates of the capacitor is Q by A epsilon naught. Now let's see, we know that uh, E is equal to V by R or I may call it V by D as well. Uh, so this means that V is equal to E into D. E uh, is E naught over here which is equal to Q by A epsilon naught D and we know capacity, let's say original capacity of this capacitor which is hollow from within, I call that C naught, C naught is what? C naught is Q divided by V which will be equal to Q divided by Q divided by A epsilon naught D, this Q get cancelled out, oh sorry, uh, this was E naught into D and uh, this D should have been up there. I'm very sorry for that. Ah, so this is uh, this get cancelled out and capacity turns out to be epsilon naught A by D. The capacity turns out to be epsilon naught A by D. So this is the expression for a parallel capacitor which is empty from within and we want to tell you that had there been a dielectric material filling this whole space the capacity would become C, let's say, C, that will be K times epsilon naught A by D. So that means simply by putting in some dielectric, it can increase the capacity K times. That's a good thing. The capacity is clearly dependent, is proportional to the area of the section of the plate. Bigger the area, the more would be the capacity, and closer are the plate. That means the smaller it will be, more would be the capacity. Now think of a situation in which I've got this uh, similar capacitor, but I have put a metallic slab between its plates. This is a metal. So, similarly, this plate is grounded, and we will tell you that electric field E naught is equal to Q by A epsilon naught, but that field exists in this region. In this region, within the metal, within the conductor, electric field is zero. So basically what will happen, this uh, positive will induce negative on this plate and the positive on this plate and negative on this plate. So whatever was the effective distance D and this is let's say the thickness of the slab T, the effective distance has reduced from D to D minus T. So let's see, 
uh, what is V? V would be E naught into D minus T because electric field is existing only in the region. Uh, the effective distance is D minus T between positive and negative charges. Now put in the value Q by A epsilon naught D minus T and what do I get the capacity? Is Q by B. So Q whole divided by Q by A epsilon naught d minus t, q and q get cancelled, c is equal to epsilon naught a by d minus t, you can write it down as epsilon naught a, you can take out the 1 minus t by d, epsilon naught a by d was the original capacitance of the hollow capacitor, so c is c naught divided by 1 minus t by d, clearly this thing the denominator is less than 1, that means C is greater than C naught. The capacity can be enhanced by sliding in a metallic slab. There is a very interesting case, special case for it. What if P equal to D? What if P equals to D? Well, when P is equal to D, let's put in over here, C is equal to C naught 1 minus D by D. Oh my god, C approaches infinity. Can we have a capacitor which has got infinite capacitance? Can we have a capacitor with infinite capacitance? Yes, we can have, but there will no longer remain a capacitance. Think of a bucket. I'm using it to store water. Think of a bucket. I'm using it to store water. How much water it can store depends upon its physical dimensions. But think of a bucket which doesn't have its base. How much water it can store? It can store infinite amount of water. Just keep on putting water into it. It will never be completely filled simply because the water no longer stays inside it. That's, that is all already thrown up. Similarly over there, if you have got a conductor that means T equal to D, that means the whole space is being filled by a connector. So if you keep on giving charge to the one positive plate, there is a connector within, the charge will flow to the other plate and get grounded. So it, it is basically not holding on to any charge at all. Okay. So that's just of theoretical interest that C approaches to infinity. That no longer remains a capacitor at all. But what if I can fill it? with a dielectric slab. Let's think of that. Now, I have got a capacitor with a dielectric slab between its plates. There is positive charge on it, there is negative charge on it, this is grounded, this is thickness T, and I have got electric field E, this distance is D, in the empty space, I've got electric field E naught, whereas within this slab of dielectric, the electric field would not be zero, rather it would get reduced by a factor K, which is the dielectric constant of that medium. So inside this slab, the field is E naught by K, and the empty space electric field is E naught. So what would be what what would be V? V would be E naught into d minus t. This empty space is d minus t. So e naught into d minus t plus potentially the scalar quantity will simply get added up and e naught by k times t. Within that distance t, the electric field is e naught by k. So I can take out e naught common and it becomes d minus t plus t by k and you can put in the value of E naught, which you already know, Q by A epsilon naught into D minus T plus T by K. And what is the potential, what is the capacity? That the Q by D, whatever get cancelled out, we will get uh, epsilon naught A divided by D minus T plus T by K. You can take out D common from the denominator, 1 minus T by D plus T by D K. The capacity C is equal to C naught, which is the capacity of the whole capacitor, C naught 1 minus T by D plus T by DK. Now this is the capacity of a capacitor which has got a slab of dielectric material, so, um, uh, just uh, lying inside it, and uh, its thickness is different from the distance between the plates. 
Now again, we can do a similar special case if t equal to d. Just replace t by d and what you get? c is equal to c naught divided by 1 minus d by d plus d by dk. So basically that means k times c naught. The capacity would increase k times as we got in the first place as such. So primarily what we want to see that, that okay, uh, a simple conductor connected to source of charge cannot hold on to much charge. Its potential rises really sharply and its capacity to hold charge is really very very bad. So what you can do, you, when you bring another metallic conductor close to it, its capacity increases. So why not bring it from all sides that forms a, a cylindrical capacitor to increase its capacity. And then but if I can put in that in that empty space some dielectric material and that can be really cheap. That can be simply rolls of paper. Paper is a very good dielectric. You can put in paper into that empty space and you can increase the capacity. And actually that is the case. What normally is done, for example, are just some salts like sodium bullet, the common salt. That's uh, common salt can is also a very good dielectric. So what you can do, you can um, uh, you can have a saturated solution of sodium bullet, put some water sheets into it, just dry them out. So water will have that uh, paper will have some dielect this uh, sodium bullet deposited on its surface on its both sides. Just make its rolls and put into that empty space uh, of that cylindrical capacitor, and its capacity would really enhanced. So this is how uh, we increase the capacity of a device. This is one part of it. And in the second part, we'll discuss what will happen to electric field, potential, energy, etc. when we slide in some dielectric slab into it. And what are the forces acting on that? It would be interesting to do that. That we'll do in the next part. Thank you.